UFC hot takes. You guys loved my last video about that, my unpopular opinions, my hot takes, whatever you want to call it. Some of you really liked it. Some of you really didn't like it. So today I'm going to be going my all-time takes, okay? Every division I'm going to be covering, like the, the probably the biggest story that I can think of from every division that I want to talk about. And that I might have a hot take on that you might not agree with. So if you agree, if you disagree, let me know down below. If you enjoy the video, and make sure you drop a like and subscribe and everything, boys. Um, but yeah, let me get straight into it. At flyweight, Mighty Mouse, okay? I'm going to say it, bro. The Mighty Mouse Ben Askren trade, it was a good idea, okay? A lot of people are like, oh, worst trade in history. Let me ask you something, bro. Let me ask you a question, dog. Who's got the first question? Uh, me, okay? Uh, what was Mighty Mouse doing for the UFC as a company? Like, what was he doing for the UFC as a company? The point of the whole Ben Askren trade was they got Ben Askren, who's a trash talker, who's going to draw pay-per-views, who's going to sell pay-per-views, and that's exactly what he did. He kick-started Masvidal's superstardom. Like, he made Masvidal famous, pretty much. Kanye Wested him, all right? Made him famous. Then he built that built up Usman, that built up Edwards, um, the Masvidal effect, and also, you know, uh, Askren had his run-ins with uh, Kamaru Usman as well. Kind of built up the whole Marty thing as well. He started that. That's right. He started the fucking Marty thing. So you have him to thank. Versus Mighty Mouse. Still a great fighter. But what, what, what was he doing for the company in terms of pay-per-views? In terms of building up stars? In terms of attention? He wasn't doing any of that. You know what I mean? And now Flyway is considered one of the best divisions. Because, you know, now it's so open. You know, you've got Brandon Moreno up there. But you've got Pantoja coming. You know what I mean? You've got all these guys at Flyway. It's... The UFC is better off with, after that Ben Askren Mighty Mouse trade, in my opinion. You know, obviously, would they like to have Mighty Mouse as well? Yes, but if that's what they had to do to get Ben Askren and get all the side effects from Ben Askren, I think they got a lot out of him for three fights versus what Mighty Mouse has been doing in one FC. Like, comparatively, in terms of their effect on their company, I would say Ben Askren uh, was a bigger deal to the UFC than Mighty Mouse was to one FC. But again, it's hot take. So hey, if you don't disagree. I don't give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? Moving on, bantamweight division. Henry Cejudo, speaking of, I I'm going to say it. I'm about to say it. Henry Cejudo should be considered the bantamweight goat, bro. He already finished TJ. He finished Cruz. He finished Marlon Marais. I don't know what else he would have to do. You know, if you want to bring up Henan Burrell back to the UFC and have Henry Cejudo finish him as well, then go ahead, but... He defended the bantamweight belt. He won the bantamweight belt. He beat the champion that that lost the belt. You know what I mean? So you can't say that he he didn't. He never beat the true champion. He already beat TJ Dillashaw in 20 seconds, bro. So I think, in my opinion, Henry Cejudo deserves to be in the conversation of, if not considered, the bantamweight goat. Um, and the next topic is kind of similar as well. But yeah, that's my thoughts on Henry Cejudo. I think he should be considered the bantamweight goat. Um, you know, I know he beat an older Dominic Cruz. I know a lot of people kind of consider Cruz the GOAT, and for a while I did too. But honestly, sitting down to think about this video, I mean, you know, Dominic Cruz didn't finish TJ Dillashaw. He has two wins, I think, or one win over TJ Dillashaw. It was a very, very close fight regardless. The fight that he won the belt from TJ Dillashaw in, I, it was one fight, yeah. He won the belt from him in a very close fight, you know. And Henry Cejudo finished him, and that is a big deal. And I'll get onto that later, even with the guy that I don't like, that I don't want to acknowledge. I will acknowledge that if you finish someone, you deserve a lot of credit for that, especially if they're a champion. So for Henry Cejudo to have finished TJ Dillashaw and finished Dominic Cruz quite handedly, I'm going to say Henry Cejudo deserves to be considered the bantamweight goat for that, because he's already on the top five, top six pound for pound, like all time. So why is he? Why is it a stretch to say he should be the bantamweight goat? I don't know, but I feel like it is. So that's my hot take for bantamweight. Moving on to featherweight, similar kind of, uh, similar kind of thing to say okay i think volkanovsky should be considered the featherweight goat i like i i don't know what else he has to do to be considered better than jose aldo all time he beat jose aldo beat max holloway three times you know he's on a 22 fight win streak as you can see um undefeated in the ufc beat chad mendez beat jose aldo beat korean zombie beat max holloway which is a great win for um his legacy compared to aldo's um i know volk is kind of humble he's gonna be like look all time i'm still gonna put aldo above myself but I think I'm one of the best, you know. I think Aldo's the best featherweight. I'm the best fighter ever. So, you know, we'll have to see. Don't change your picks on Islam. Because you're done when I when I win, you know. He's a humble guy. But I honestly think that Alexander Volkanovsky is better than Jose Aldo all time. He already beat Jose Aldo. No one talks about that. I know it was an older Jose Aldo. But I mean, you know, you guys want to give Marab credit as like this fucking monster at Bantamweight when he just beat Jose Aldo. But... 
Volkanovski beat him at featherweight at the end of his featherweight run and sent him to bantamweight. So, not really sure why Alexander Volkanovski isn't the featherweight goat. He's got title defenses, not as much as Aldo, obviously. But um, looking at the opponents he's beat, I mean, Jesus Christ, he has two title defenses against Volkanov uh, against Holloway, bro. You know, that's 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 huge legacy wise. And speaking of featherweight, let me just add on to this one. I think Conor McGregor deserves to be in that conversation as well. Now, hold on before you fucking go in the comments and have a fit, alright? Calm down, mate. Alright, I can hear you, t hear you fucking typing. Okay? No one came close to beating McGregor at featherweight. Take away lightweight, okay? Purely featherweight resume. Because people kind of talk about the Volkanovski Aldo fight. Oh, it was an older Al uh, Aldo. Conor McGregor smoked Prime Aldo. I don't, I don't give a fuck, bro. He smoked Prime Aldo. No one came close. And Men and fucking McGregor beat Mendez, who Volkanovski had to fight as well. Who got he got dropped by Mendez and older Mendez. McGregor fucking smoked him pretty much. Finished him in two rounds. Um, you know, didn't get dropped it or anything. You know what I mean? Just finished him quite quite handedly. Beat up Max Holloway. Beat up Dustin Poirier. Beat up. Uh, finished fucking Jose Aldo in 13 seconds. Undefeated at featherweight. No one came close. I think people don't give McGregor enough respect, and I'm gonna go into that in the next one as well. Uh, but yeah, Alexander Volkanovski, featherweight goat. That's my hot take for featherweight, okay? Lightweight division. This one's going to make him real, real fucking mad, okay? Khabib Nurmagomedov is not that fucking good, bro. I'm sorry, dude. What do I mean by that? Legacy-wise. Obviously, skill for skill. He's one of the most dominant fighters we've ever seen. Okay? One of the greatest records we've ever seen as well. But in terms of goat status, I've seen people put this dude top five all time. And I'm just, I just want to know, who did he beat to get top five? Who did he beat to become a UFC champion again? Remind me. Just why don't, why don't you just scroll back in your history? Dude, he beat McGregor, bro. He beat McGregor, dude. He beat Poirier, bro. He beat Gaethje, dude. Dude, who did he win the belt off? You wanna know who he won the fucking belt off? Ally Quinta, bro. Ally Quinta ranked number eleven, and you that's that's that, that's such a fucking Mickey Mouse ring, dude. That's a that's a LeBron bubble level championship win. I, like, I'm gonna say it, McGregor has a better resume. I don't give a fuck, bro. McGregor has a better resume, dude. Double champion. Beat Jose Aldo, who was pound for pound number one. Beat Eddie Alvarez, who just beat RDA, who's one of the best lightweight champions in recent memory as well. You know? Already had a win over Dustin Poirier. Inside a round. You know what? Has a win over Max Holloway, Chad Mendez. Like, what, like, what the fuck are we doing, bro? What the fuck are we doing? Why is this guy in the goat goat conversation? He he fought absolute bums to get to undefeated. By the way, John Jones is undefeated as well, but he's not fucking. People don't talk about him the way they talk about Khabib. Like John Jones is just as dominant, in my opinion, in his prime. But we'll get to that in a minute. Another guy who kind of fought some subpar competition. But dude, if you go on Khabib's tapology right now, go go look go take a look at his fucking you know, go take a look at his fucking record and look at some of the guys he was fighting. You know, negative records in when Khabib's double-digit wins. You know, the shows were built around Khabib. Connor was right about that shit, and no one wants to acknowledge it because people don't like Connor. I understand, okay, but all I'm saying is, take the bias out of it, okay? Take the bias out of it. Is Khabib really the GOAT with three good wins, and one of them is against Justin Gaethje, who people swear is the shittest, like... Like, is one of the worst lightweight ranked fighters right now. Like, people think this dude would lose to Mateus Gamera. And you're talking about Khabib as a top five GOAT of all time. See how your bias has to work? Like, it has to it has to go both ways. You guys can't... A lot of these Khabib fans, a lot of these UFC fans, man, they're so fickle. They're so dumb, honestly. Like, they're, they'll, they'll be like, dude, Khabib's all time. He smashed McGregor, blah, blah, blah. He smashed Gaethje, he smashed Poirier. But then if you bring up, oh, yeah, Gaethje's pretty good. No, he's not, dude. Gaethje's fucking trash, bro. Gaethje would get smoked by Saruki and get smoked by Jalen Turner. Which one is it? You know what I mean? Which one is it, dude? They're not mutually exclusive. If this guy's pound for pound number one for beating Justin Gaethje, then Justin Gaethje has to be considered good, right? So which one is it? You know what I mean? Poirier, never a UFC champion. McGregor, that's a great win for Khabib. That's a great legacy-defining win. But is it enough to put you a top five GOAT when people act like McGregor's the worst fighter in the UFC right now? Which one is it, dude? That's all I'm saying. Khabib is not the fucking top five goat. I think he's below fucking DC on my list. He's below fucking... Mo he sh he's borderline deserves to be below McGregor in terms of his legacy. But because he beat McGregor, I'll put him above him all time. But, like, still, dude. Come on, bro. People talk about this dude like he's the best fighter to ever walk the earth. 
three wins and you won the belt off fucking Ally Quinta. Shut the fuck up, dude. Moving on, alright. Welterweight, dude. You can tell the Khabib shit pisses me off, bro. Welterweight. Colby Covington. I gotta say this, dude. I'm a Colby Covington fan, but I'm gonna say this. Colby Covington is not a top five welterweight of all time. I know a lot of people want him to be on the pound for pound list right now. I really don't see it. I do not see pound for pound top 15, unfortunately. Um, and top five welterweight of all time. Sorry, man. Name five people better. Okay. GSP, better. Matt Hughes, better legacy. Tyron Woodley, better legacy. Don't care that he beat him. It was old to wash Tyron Woodley. You know what I mean? Tyron Woodley still, still, still beat him. You know what I mean? Tyron Woodley still has a title, a title win and multiple title defenses. You know what I mean? Yes, Colby Covington deserves to be close to the top five for beating Tyron Woodley. He deserves to be close to that for going, going, uh, you know, however many close fights with Usman. You know what I mean? He deserves to be close to that for beating Robbie Lawler. But do I think he's top five when you have GSP, you have Hughes, you have Woodley, you have Usman, you have Robbie Lawler, all undisputed champions with title defenses? Sorry, man. Those guys are all have better legacies than Colby Covington all time. So I just cannot put Colby Covington in my top five welterweights of all time. I have to put Robbie Lawler above him. That's, that's on I honestly believe that, bro. Like, I, I, I'm sorry, dude. I just have to do it. So, that's my welterweight hot take. I'm going to move on to middleweight. I'm going to be a bit quicker. I kind of lost my shit on the Khabib one. But, you know, it's like he's like Marvin Vittori. He just pisses me off because of his fans, dude. All right, middleweight. Alex Pereira. I'm going to say it, bro. Alex Pereira is simply just better than Adesanya. Like, pe people are so mad. They're like, dude, five seconds left in that first round. Adesanya finishes him. No, he doesn't. Because then he wouldn't have gone for that if there was five seconds left. He, he stung him because Alex Pereira was coming forward trying to finish the round strong. Even though I think he was winning the first round. And he hurt Adesanya a lot more times than the UFC commentary wants to acknowledge. And more than the fans want to acknowledge. Um, you know, the grappling, he made some mistakes. But he's going to improve because he's training with fucking Glover Teixeira. And people act like you're just stuck as you are. Even though he's a fucking borderline light heavyweight. And he's going to be able to defend takedowns. He's going to be able to stop wrestling. Um, and there's going to be no surprise factor from Adesanya. I think Alex Perez is just better, dude. He out kick, he beat him in the leg kick battle. He hurt him on the feet. He was outboxing him. You know what I mean? Adesanya did good. I'm not saying he didn't do good. I'm just saying people act like it was like a fluke. I think Alex Perez is just better than Adesanya, bro. I think he's just better. So we'll have to see in the rematch. I'm really looking forward to that fight because I think it's going to prove a lot of people wrong. So that's my middleweight hot take. I think Alex Perez is just better than Adesanya. Sorry. Moving on, light heavyweight. This one's going to be a bit controversial as well. That's the point of these, dude. I don't want you guys to agree with everything I say. That'd be boring as fuck. Okay, moving on. Light heavyweight. John Jones, the GOAT of light heavyweight. Okay, no no debating. I'm not coming out saying, you know what? Actually, Chelsea is the GOAT of light heavyweight. Okay, I'm not coming through with that, all right? But this is what I will say about John Jones. This is my take about John Jones. Um, John Jones is a bit of a weight bully, and he kind of fought like subpar UFC champions. People talk about his resume, it's pretty impressive, a lot of them are UFC champions, but look at the guys he actually was fighting, dude. Fucking Shogun, bro. Really? Rampage, dude. Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen, bro. Like, these are the killers that John Jones was fighting. I think John Jones was just way ahead of his time, and now it's catching up to him. That's why he's, like, losing to Dominic Reyes and Thiago Santos, because I feel like it all just kind of caught up to him eventually, because... I think he was quite advanced and he was very athletic for the sport. And I think we've seen with guys like Jamal Hill and, um, you know, Yoel Romero and stuff like this. Like, um, I, I'm sure I'm missing some, you know, just even Khabib is a special athlete. You know what I mean? The more athletic you are, the better you can do it at, in MMA, even if you're not technically the most skilled. And I think John Jones is uber athletic. He's extremely, extremely athletic. His body is basically designed for fighting, so I think he he was a bit of a weight bully, and he fought kind of subpar U like subpar UFC champions on his resume. I mean, look at what GSP, you know, even Conor McGregor had to beat fucking Jose Aldo, you know what I mean? Um, Daniel Cormier had to fight fucking Rumble, dude. Had to fight Rumble. Had to fight fucking Stipe, you know what I mean? Had to fight all these um these dangerous, dangerous guys that were way bigger than them, you know what I mean? GSP had to fight Matt Hughes. Had to fight fucking, you know, John Fitch. Um, just just fought, like, Matt Hughes. I feel like Matt Hughes is better than anyone that John Jones had to fight in, in, besides DC. You know, McGregor had to fight fucking Jose Aldo, is my point. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, look at the competition John Jones had to fight. Look at where they ended up. Look at their, their fights after he fought them. And think to yourself, is this dude really the fucking 
most dominant fighter ever? Like, has he really fought, like, the best competition compared to other UFC champions? Especially GSP, in my opinion. Um, the guys that he had to fight. Obviously, he has Matt Serra on there and, you know, Nick Diaz. That was kind of a, a shit show fight. But still, man, he fought really, really tough guys. And I think tougher guys stylistically and size-wise than John Jones had to deal with at light heavyweight. Because he's a huge dude and he's basically built for fighting. So, that's my take at light heavyweight. Bit of a nuanced one, but let me know what you think down below. Last one at heavyweight, okay? DC is better than Stipe, bro. I, I don't care that he beat him twice. Listen to what I'm about to say, okay? DC is better than Stipe. He just fought him at the wrong time. Okay, what do I mean by that? That sounds like a cope. That sounds like copium. Maybe it's a bit of that copium pack hitting. But all I'm saying is DC is better than Stipe. He fought him when he was too old. Remember a time where DC was ranked number one at heavyweight, or he was ranked about to be number one at heavyweight, and Cain Velasquez was the champion. What did DC do? He moved down to light heavyweight. You're telling me that if DC just stayed at heavyweight and Kane was never there, if DC was the Marab of heavyweight, that he wouldn't have beat Stipe? He wouldn't have beat Young... Prime DC couldn't beat Prime DC... Couldn't be beat Prime Stipe. Is that what you're trying to tell me? That's what I'm saying. Skill for skill, like, you know, everything taken into consideration, I truly believe DC is a better fighter than Stipe. He just fought him at the wrong time, in my opinion. You know, he came off a loss... Um, came off that John Jones knockout, he, you know, he came up from light heavyweight instead of being a natural heavyweight his entire career, and prime DC, prime, like, John Jones days DC, if he fought fucking Stipe at the time, you're telling me he wouldn't have fucking waxed him? Come on, bro. That's all I'm saying. I genuinely think DC all around is better than Stipe. He just fought him at the wrong time, and he would have been heavyweight champion if Kane wasn't there, in my opinion. I think he would have been that guy. He would have been the heavyweight goat if if Kane wasn't there, in my opinion. I think he would have got the jump on, on Stipe in that regard. But those are my hot takes all time. Let me know what you think down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know all your thoughts down below, boys. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more videos, all right? I'll see you in the next one. Follow me on Instagram, at MMA. by the way, boys. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.